I'm Luke Hansen, a special correspondent for America Media, reporting from the Synod of Bishops for the Amazon region. And today I'm speaking with Leah Casimero, who is a member of the Wapichan indigenous group in Guyana. She was appointed by Pope Francis as an auditor at the Synod, and she works in bilingual education. Leah, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Now, as an auditor at the Synod, you had an opportunity to give a, a four-minute speech to the whole Synod Assembly. When you were preparing to come here to the Synod, you know, what was the most important thing you wanted to say or communicate? So in my speech, I shared about my personal experience studying in the city as an indigenous youth mm. and what that was like and about integral education. One of the things that the Wapton people said that we don't want to disappear is our identity, our culture, and so on. Because if that's gone, we are basically people with no identity. We don't know who we are really trying to fit in, you know, in, in, in this world. So we said we didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So the best way we thought it would be to start our children from a very young age learning in their own language, about their own culture and traditions first, and then whatever else we need to learn about the wider country or the world. So I said, okay, I, will, I would be sharing that experience. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I think it was the process that brought us there. That's what I shared at the Synod as well, the process of okay. where this bilingual education uh, program came out from. Because it's not about, you know what, I think this is best for you, Wapichan people, and I think we should do this. No, this idea came out from us. Mm -hmm. And then the church, through the Jesuits, with their financial, spiritual support, they accompanied us along. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the spirit of the Synod. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I will be bringing that aspect to the Synod. Mm -hmm. One of the topics that's come up in a strong way at the Synod is inculturation. Yeah. And it's related to what you're describing here, like in the world of education. Yes. What is your experience of the the church in your community? Is it an enculturated church with an indigenous face, with an Amazonian face? From beginning to end, the service is in Wapchan. Mm -hmm. From the prayers, because the leaders are local people themselves. From the prayers to the hymns to the readings, we have the New Testament translated in Wapchan. And on special occasions like feast days and so on, we dance, we, we do our traditional dances, we come in our traditional wear mm -hmm. to church. First, for very special occasions, we do that. Yeah. And we share, we have this thing called Wadawap, where we bring food together, everyone brings food, and we share, which is a very big part of our tra uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. A number of the participants in the Synod have des described the very important role that women play in the church in the Amazon. Is that also true in your community? What are some of the leadership or ministerial roles that women play in your community? Well, currently in my church, we have four extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion. I mm -hmm. think that's the right term. Yeah. Yeah. And four of them are, are women. The four of them are women, so I would say pretty They're much. They're the only four. They are the only four. Okay. Yeah, and so they, during the communion service, they distribute communion. And to the sick, they go out to visit. Every week, they do this every week and they take turns. So it's like almost like a full-time job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the catechists, the, um, the ones who teach religious education in our church, they are mainly women again, uh, but of course we do have men and so on, but the presence of women is very strong, very evident in our church. There's, there have been a number of different proposals about how this ministerial leadership of women could be more recognized in these communities, and one of the proposals is to ordain women to the permanent diaconate. Is that something you could imagine within your own community that you'd like to see? I think that's very possible. In fact, it came up in our discussions. Uh, that was one of the questions that was a part of the um, pre-synodal document that we had. 
uh, what did we think about this? And we thought, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are already doing so much and they're asking our opinions here. So <laughs> we mm -hmm. said, why not? We think it's, it's something that we can do. Do you think, you know, a very common way of addressing the priest shortage that's been talked about at the Synod is the ordination of married men yeah. to the priesthood. Do you see that as something that's possible within your own community and it would serve your community well and there would be more men who could serve as priests if that changed? So when we had the discussion in, in our group and we were looking at it a little bit more short term and long term, so in the short term, we need priests to be present in our area. And so we said, well, in the short run, we could. Of course, if the community agrees and everything, mm -hmm. then that is a possibility. But in the long run, we were thinking, why don't we help the young people and the people who are currently working in a church through formation and so mm -hmm. on? How can we get them? How can we make them grow? How can we build them to reach uh, another level. You've been a part of a small language group here at the Synod, I have. which I believe has happened in both English and French in English your group. English and French, yes. What has been your experience in that group, and uh, what was the atmosphere like, and did you feel listened to and taken seriously as, <laughs> you know, one of the young women at the Synod? Well, I must say it was very intimidating at first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, when we went into the small groups, there were eight cardinals in my group. <laughs> eight cardinals. <laughs> and uh, the rest uh, were bishops. And then I think there were three of us indigenous people in there. Anyhow, we were given a fair chance to speak. I think that was one of the things I appreciated. I mean, it was the same in the conference hall. We were given four minutes, the same as all the Synod Fathers. I think that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I have the same amount of time like them to yeah. say what I want to say. And for me, that felt like equal because mm -hmm. it was across the board. And that same spirit was in the small groups as well. What has uh, the presence of Pope Francis been like? I must say he is really a leader by example. He made it very clear that when he spoke, I am speaking as one of the Synod Fathers, mm -hmm. as one of you, as one member of this Synod. Mm -hmm. For me, that is something that says, I am on your level, I'm ready to listen to you and really be part of this journey. So he was listening the whole time. He was just there listening. It was all about that synod spirit. We are in this together. We must listen respectfully. We must try to listen to understand and so on. So for me, that um, I think that changed, not changed the atmosphere, but that brought uh, a richer experience, I think, in the hall. A number of people have described the synod as a place where discernment happens. So I'm interested in your experience of where God has been most present in this synod. It was the whole spirit of the synod as in we are the Catholic Church. We're universal. And we have Catholics from different parts of the world. We have our own differences. We have um, different ways we worship. I mean, in the Catholic Church, we have different rites and so on. And then coming together, in spite of all those differences, being able to listen to one another. Because it's not really easy to, um, like, for example, the ordination of married men. If you say something like that, I don't know, maybe in, in the U.S. or something. Well, that's where I have been reading about these things. <laughs> it's like, why do they want this? This is, you know, going again, so on, so on, so on. So many things to say about it. But when you actually, if you were living in these areas where you're Catholic, mm -hmm. but you don't get a mass, for one whole year, two years. Mm. Oh, I think one of the questions in the Synod Hall was, are you even Catholic then, if the Eucharist is at the center of our Catholic faith and so on, and mm -hmm. people who have Mass every day or have access to that every day, every week, anytime, and sometimes you choose not to go. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, Mass is there every day, but 
I'll only go on Sunday or I will only go next week or so because you have the option. Mm -hmm. We don't. Some of our communities, um, they don't, we don't even have that option. So, I mean, if you actually live there and get to experience it, I'm sure it will change the way you think, your mm -hmm. perspective on things, so I think. So we're in the final week of the Synod now. Yeah. What is your hope for what will come from this Synod? For me, like I mentioned to you earlier, it's, it's, it's one thing to have all these beautiful ideas, to listen and so on, and the action part comes next. Mm -hmm. So after all this work that has been done and all this rich encounter experiences, what, do, what, what will come out of it? That is what I, I want to know. What, what will come out of it? So I was having a discussion uh, with my bishop and what this means for us back home. He was just asking what was like close to my heart mm -hmm. and so on. And for me, I would say the youth, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of young people in our church. When, when we were asking the question, what, what do you want? What can the church help you with? They wanted to be confident. They wanted to be self-confident. Mm. And they wanted to be able to speak in public, Mm -hmm. to read, to proclaim the word of God in front of everybody. So to, to somebody listening, it might seem very basic, very simple. Mm -hmm. But then we're not providing the opportunities to build our young people in that area, I think. So, Leah, yeah. thank you so much for yeah <laughs> talking with me today and for being here. Thank you for having me. 